Over the years, I've seen so much speculation, theorizing, and questions surrounding the identity of Tarzan's parents. And that's why today I'm going to explain who they truly were, where they were traveling to, and how the legend of their death has changed. Is this me? And this is my father. To begin to understand who this man and woman were, we first need to look back at Tarzan's earliest adventures that were originally written by Edgar Rice Burroughs. This is an extremely long series that showcases the many journeys Tarzan goes on throughout the African world. He goes to numerous ancient cities and fights many warlords and becomes quite the hero. Specifically for today though, we must go back to the beginning of this 24 novel saga which was titled Tarzan of the Apes. And it is here we learn almost everything we know about Tarzan's parents who were revealed to be named John and Alice Clayton, also known as Lord and Lady Greystoke of England. Yes, believe it or not, Tarzan's parents were people with royal titles, but I'm sorry they weren't from Arendelle. Instead, they were the Earl and the Countess of Greystoke, which meant they were people of nobility, wealth, and were high atop the social world, which makes Tarzan the heir to an incredible fortune in England. Who would have guessed Tarzan was actually filthy stinking rich? This is an idea that is touched upon in films across Tarzan's many features, including 1918's Tarzan of the Apes, 1984's Greystoke, and 2016's The Legend of Tarzan. All in all, they were a dignified family with the respect of many and had a great life. Jean specifically was highly regarded by all, being remembered as a noble monument of historic achievement upon a thousand victorious battlefields and was a strong and virile man mentally, morally, and physically. And yes, it's also true that Tarzan's ancestry actually made him related to Clayton, who we know as the man who came to hunt Tarzan's gorilla family. In the novel, the Clayton we know was named William Cecil Clayton, and was in fact the son of John Clayton's brother, making Tarzan and Clayton cousins, which I have to admit blew my mind. This is the type of deep family drama I love discussing. But that conflict between a civilized and wild man would happen long after John and Alice's disappearance. Mm -hmm. Hello fun people, welcome to my new studio. I'm Isaac Carlson, I'm focused on spreading magic by discussing Disney. So if you're new here and you'd like to talk about Tarzan and other animated films, then consider liking this video and subscribing. I just moved into this home, I've taken over the basement as my studio. I've been setting everything up all weekend and I'm just ecstatic and so grateful that I have the ability to customize the space, have room to experiment, and can make everything my own so that I can make magical content like the history of Tarzan's parents, which is something I've wanted to talk about for a long time. I couldn't wait to share the answers to so many of the questions that I and so many of you have wondered about since we were kids. In these characters' original story, we can finally begin to see who they were before they were left on an African shore. Almost two decades before Clayton and Tarzan would meet, Tarzan's father worked for the British colonial office and was sent with his wife to British West Africa to investigate claims of native abuse in the Belgian Congo Free State. You see, there was rumors of recruiting practices by an unnamed European power who were forcing young local men into pretty much slavery under the guise of joining a native army. So England took action by sending Lord Greystoke and his young wife to Africa aboard a small charter ship known as the Fawalda. But unfortunately, this crew was bad news. The crew of the Fawalda was described as the offscourings of the sea, unhanged murderers and cutthroats of every race and every nation whose officers were swarthy bullies, hating and hated by their crew. The captain himself even beat a sailor and tried to shoot another, only being saved because of the intervention by Lord Greystoke, who had struck down the captain's arm as he had seen the weapon flash in the sun. While the captain was furious with John, he knew that he could not act against him, knowing that the English Navy would hunt him down for any mistreatment of a British civil servant. Sensing growing danger on board, Lord Greystoke and Lady Alice tried to keep their distance from the crew and even consider being transferred to a nearby British warship, but just hours before a deadly mutiny on the ship, inevitably they decide against it when John realizes that they would possibly seem weak in the eyes of their peers, a decision that they would most likely regret for the rest of their lives. Moments after the British vessel left their sight, they learn of a rebellion forming against the officers of the ship. Lord Greystoke tries to warn the captain, but the captain dismisses the British man, and when he returns to his room, he discovers that 
that his family's weapons and ammunition have been stolen. The next morning, the crew of the Fawalda take over the ship and the Claytons are forced to watch as the officers are brutally murdered. And while they likely would have been killed as well, it turns out that the man John had saved, known as Black Michael, had become the new captain of the ship, which leads to him protecting them from the crew and ensuring that they would remain safe on board. But Black Michael had a big problem. In the British Navy, mutineers were punished with public canings, floggings, and executions. And because they had mutinied while English cargo was on board, which was the Claytons, they had committed a punishable offense if their deeds were discovered. Being an honorable man, Black Michael could not kill the people who had saved his life, but he also couldn't leave Lord Greystoke and Lady Alice as witnesses to his crimes without risking everything his crew had accomplished. Therefore, he decided he would leave these British citizens on the coast of Africa. So John and Alice were not shipwrecked in their original tale along with their baby son. They were actually allowed to disembark with all of their belongings and were promised that they would be rescued by the British government in time. Instead of pieces of their ship and relics of their past life washing to shore, all of their belongings, including their revolvers, are left with them, as well as a supply of food and tools, so that they could sustain themselves as they awaited the birth of the child that Alice was carrying. While initially devastated by what had happened to them, which makes sense, their entire lives had been eradicated, the Claytons summoned the will to survive, keeping their heads up. They took the strength from those who needed them and constructed a home for themselves. But of course we know that their contentment with the jungle would not last forever. Instead of trying to adapt to their surroundings, they try to make their surroundings adapt to them. John chops down trees to build their house, hunts the local animals for food, and crafts interior decorations out of clay and wood. Within the walls of their home, they attempt to remain civilized. They read books, have conversations, and try to make their lives as normal as possible, but that leads them to be unprepared when danger moves towards them. For me, I feel like that's exactly what I would try to do as well. I want it to be as normal as possible, but let me know what you would do down in the comments because I feel like there's two sides to this story, especially when we find out what actually happens to them. On one occasion that scars Alice throughout the rest of her life, they are attacked by a massive ape who takes down John until Alice is able to fire their gun at the creature, which leads to the ape coming after Alice until the ape dies from the wound it had sustained. In the original story, Alice is never the same again and spends her days denying where she was and living in a false reality that they were back in London with their baby boy. The night of the attack, Alice gave birth to the heir to the Greystoke estate, who was named John Clayton II. But before I explain how Tarzan's parents originally died, of course, what was depicted in Disney's tale is that they were both killed by the ruthless apex predator, the leopard, Sabor. Through Kala's eyes, we see that the Claytons fought together to fight off the beast with their shotgun. They remained in their home, guarding the son they loved, and that willingness to face death saved their child's life. An alternate opening of Tarzan's film, though, showed Tarzan's father alone during a storm mourning his wife's death, which is more similar to their fate in Tarzan's original story. You see, when Alice escaped into her own reality, the joy and happiness she found while in the possession of her little son and the constant attention of her husband made the next year one of the happiest years of her life, while John gave up hope of being rescued. And that ability to believe that he would survive to see the world he once knew again became even worse when Alice died on their baby's first birthday. It's just so tragic. The slow demise of this family is absolutely heartbreaking, and this is captured in this alternate scene that was conceptualized to show the exact moment when John is writing in his journal, outlining how devastated he is without his beloved wife while listening to a music box that holds a photo of his family. We then see him comforting his son until that moment is disturbed when Sabor reveals himself to be entering the home. John attempts to stop the beast with his gun, but is overrun, slaughtered, and dragged away to be consumed. It's an extremely horrific scene that I can't even believe was considered for the film. I can't imagine what it would have been like if I saw that in Tarzan, but what was originally said to happen was just as devastating. Hours after Alice's death, the hulking, raging, and easily angered leader of the gorillas, Kerchak, who, trust me, is not the rough around the edges but loving gorilla we're most familiar with, 
travels to the Clayton's home to investigate the weapon that had killed inhabitants throughout the jungle. And when he finds John Clayton inside, he kills the man. But of course, his son lives on, as he does in all of his legends. In every story surrounding the King of the Apes, it's the refusal of Tarzan's once wealthy, educated, and respected parents to allow their son to be consumed by the danger of the jungle, their ability to fight as their situation continued to seem hopeless that allowed their son to live on to become a strong, resilient, and powerful leader. They gave up everything so that Tarzan could live. But what do you think of the tragedy of Tarzan's parents? And of course, if you enjoyed this discussion and you'd like to see more like it, then consider subscribing and clicking the beautiful bell, and then click on another magical video in the description or on the screen, like the story of Tarzan's child. Finally, as always, thanks for watching and have a magical day. Oh.